is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Evolution X ROM. This is the 8th February 2022 build and this ROM has received a bunch of updates in the previous days. If you're wondering how is the update situation right now on the Evolution X, it is continuous or you can eventually get an update after every 3-4 days. So this is how the update situation is on the Evolution X ROM as of right now. It, this of course includes the GApps and I have flashed this ROM with the latest MIUI firmware and of course that is based on Android 11 and if you don't know how to actually flash this ROM, you can check out the guide from the description or the cards. In the about section, we have the Evolution X logo up top, we have the Android version as Android 12, the Evolution X version shows as Snow 6.0 for Rafale. And this is again 8th February 2022 build. The security patch has been updated. It is latest February 5th 2022 security patch. So that is just great. And the build date again it shows up over here. The build maintainer is of course Joe Huab and we have the build number right here. Now talking about the other things like the system panel and stuff we still get a system updater from where you can check for updates. And of course I have used the latest Orange Fox recovery to flash this ROM. The latest official one. And we have the gestures right here. We have the quick tap. Then we have the quick loop in camera and the system navigation gestures and in the settings we don't get the thickness of the pill bar adjustment that has been removed i guess also the advanced gestures has been removed like the excellent swipe gestures and stuff those things has been removed from the gesture settings and we still have this swipe to invoke assistant but if you say ok google or hey google i'm not really sure why it's not working with the voice trigger but as of right now you can only get the google assistant by just swiping from the corners that works super fine we have the one-handed mode, then the press and hold power button and stuff. Double tap option is there, then the swipe direct screenshot is also there. It also supports the capture more option, so that works. And the prevent ringing option and stuff is there. Now let's talk about the quick tap a little bit. And here, this is how you can enable the quick tap. And of course, if you like back tap the device twice, it will take a screenshot because it is set to take a screenshot. So as you can see, it takes a screenshot once I tap on the back part right here. Now if you set this and if you don't enable this require stronger taps, this will actually accidentally take a lot of screenshots. So right now it's not doing it but once I am using a case or something, I have to enable this otherwise it is taking screenshots accidentally. So that's how it is. So I will recommend if you are using this quick tap feature, make sure you are enabling this require stronger taps option. In the front camera settings, we still have the front camera sound effects and the camera LED and stuff. Then we have the Gboard as the default keyboard, of course. Now talking about the customization inside Evolver, we will find all the customizations again. And in the missed settings, right now we get some different settings like the unlimited photo storage option. So you can toggle this on or off if you want to. And we have the screenshot type and we have the pulse and the burn-in protection is also there. Then we have the USB configuration and stuff. The customization section, I would say it's not a whole different new experience, but yeah, it has plenty more features on top of whatever there was. And inside animations, we have the charging animation and stuff. And from here, you can have the CRT scale animation as well. And we have the buttons here. We have the system navigation gestures and we have the volume steps and stuff. Let me go back. Then we have the lock screen. Now here we have the UDFPS settings and from here again we have the lock screen fingerprint scanner icon picker and you get plethora of icons right now as you are noticing bunch of options that you get for the fingerprint scanner icon and also we have the UDFPS animation and as you can see plethora of animations that you can choose from. I have been using it with the wormhole one and let me show you how the wormhole one looks and from the lock screen I have the always on display disabled but I'll enable it. As you can see right now, this is how it looks. Let me show you up close by enabling always on display. If I double tap on the status bar and right now, just notice how the animation appears. It looks beautiful and it unlocks with the fingerprint scanner 100% of the time. Very reliable fingerprint scanner experience over here. I have had no issues. Sometimes it takes the screenshot accidentally. Not really sure why because I just double tapped I guess over there. And as you can see, the fingerprint scanner is no problems at all. It unlocks 100% of the time. Again, talking about the stock launcher, we have the pixel launcher to the left, we get the Google's Discover page. And yes, it is smooth enough, I would say, the scrolling on this Google Now cards. And swiping down gets you to the notification or the quick setting panel. This is how it looks like in the white theme. But if you enable the dark theme, this will go dark, of course. Swiping up gets you to the app drawer and you can search for any particular apps and we have the widgets and stuff working fine also you can add the android 12 kind of clock widget let me actually add one and as you can see it adapts to the color of the background and it looks beautiful you can adjust the size of it 
and if you tap on the clock itself it will go into the clock app of course and the animations everywhere looks amazing the whole rom is very very smooth and snappy right now now let me talk about one more thing that there is no stock camera by default here we can install the gcam unix version and i have installed it it's working great with the wide angle lens working fine also the 2x telephoto lens is working perfectly fine here no issues whatsoever even the front camera works great as you can see no issues whatsoever with the camera apps but you have to install them separately night sight photos and stuff everything should be working fine here no issues also i have installed the gcam go and that too is working perfectly fine here you can change the settings and stuff if you want to but yeah all the camera apps that you will install is working perfectly fine here i haven't tested anx camera because it's android 12 and flashing magic scan stuff is a little weird on android 12 that's why i'm avoiding flashing any anx camera as of right now so i haven't personally tested anx camera but otherwise i think it should be working fine here now talking about the quick setting panel this is how it looks like you can switch between the quick setting panel options just like this and you can edit and add multiple toggles right now over here there is a dc dimming then the high brightness mode and if you enable the high brightness mode as you can see it goes plenty bright and there is also the fps info well earlier this fps counter right here showed up really like on top and cornered on the screen but right now you can actually see the fps pretty good so yeah this is what i like over here that you can actually see the fps correctly as of right now we have everything like the battery saver the screen recorder and stuff you can record the screen with the device audio and microphone audio both at the same time no issues with that and we have the always on display toggling option the hotspot data saver night light the sound toggle etc if you tap and hold on it as you can see it has the volume panel just like this also in the power menu we have the advanced reboot and stuff everything is present now i was in the customization panel let me actually talk about it a little bit more in the dark theme we also have the theme color if you enable the dark theme let me show you you get the option to choose from the pitch black and stuff so if you enable the pitch black the background goes completely dark and it looks beautiful everywhere even in the okay so somehow i double tapped on the status bar that's why it locked so as you can see this is how the dark theme looks like it looks beautiful the accent color of course is depending on the wallpaper due to the monet theme engine so yeah the dark theme is working perfectly fine here no issues whatsoever also we have the headline and body fonts and it, right now it actually shows how the fonts will look even the icon packs you can see and you can choose from these and we have the signal icon styles also we have the wi-fi icon styles then we have the icon shapes everything you can see and you can apply from right here in the status bar we have the status bar items and stuff headset bluetooth etc icons normal stuff clock and date customization and the battery style is there also we have the right left kind of battery icon right now i'm using the right one looks very good i would say and we also have the big circle big red circle everything else and we have the battery percentage outside or inside the icon or you can hide it then we have the vaulty icons if you're using a geosim the vaulty icons will appear perfectly fine and you can choose the vaulty icon by just scrolling on this bar even the vo wi-fi icon you can customize then we have the show notification count and stuff my camera privacy indicator etc options are there you can disable it if you don't want it or if you had the like mic icon appearing on top of the quick setting panel and here inside quick settings we have the secure quick setting tile require unlocking and stuff then we have the battery estimates and the quick pull down you can have in the smart pull down the show brightness slider on the bottom and stuff right now as you can see i have the brightness slider always on the bottom but you can customize however you want to even like pixel if you don't want to have this brightness slider on the short quick setting panel you can have those features we have the animation style the animation duration etc and we have the notifications here we have the heads up and stuff disabling option or you can customize these notification stuff and even we have the in-call vibration options inside power menu of course we have the system settings fold for assistant is there for the power button advanced reboot is enabled and we have the gestures here we have the brightness control so you can slide a finger on the status bar and that will adjust the brightness of the screen this is a very handy feature for me at least then we have the toggle torch when screen is off with the power button that works fine and we have the double tap to sleep on the lock screen and status bar as well both are working great and of course i would say this is an amazing rom still and inside battery we have this look and i would say yes i have expected that the charging cycle and stuff will be added but as of right now they haven't been added yet but i would say yes the battery life has been improved on this particular rom let me actually show you with this aku battery app i have tested the battery life and with that 
here it shows about seven hours and four minutes of screen on time but i would say yes you can get about six and a half hours of screen on time easily right now on the latest evolution x rom the 8th february 2022 build at least even for future updates i would say the battery life should be stable enough it has been improving and yes it will improve in the future updates i feel the standby drain is quite less over here you shouldn't worry about that even fast charging the 33 watt charger i have used over here is working perfectly fine so yes you shouldn't be having any issues with the fast charging in the sound and vibration it still has a lot of things like the volume panel timeout and stuff and the vibrator intensity you can control it for notification ring and haptic feedback individually and we have the ringtone vibration pattern and stuff and we also have the mi audio direct with that you can change the youth edition or stuff like that you can choose from these many presets of the headsets also we have these rock jazz etc presets the sound quality via the headphone jack and bluetooth as well is just amazing no issues whatsoever that i have faced with the sound quality on this rom everything you play from youtube or spotify everything else should be sounding really really amazing over here we also have the hi-fi audio option and we have the clear speaker and stuff and touch sound screenshot sound etc disabling option is still there and we have the display settings here we get nothing much we have the night light and stuff pocket detection is there double tap to wake prevent accident or wake up wake up on plug these things are there also we have the custom dc dimming and the high brightness mode options let me go back we have the wallpapers and styles here we get to choose the wallpaper color or the basic colors from here also we have the dark theme and the themed icons then we have the app grid up to 5 by 5 grid now inside security we only have this quick unlock and stuff we don't have anything much like the forced fingerprint scanner unlocking even after reboot that thing is still not here I don't think that will be added in the future either but yeah there is no face unlock or app lock as of right now you have to live with it at least for now now talking about the performance i have had no issues whatsoever the performance of this rom is great even there is the 100 mode and stuff if you want that so yeah everywhere in the ui the whole ui's performance is just great no issues whatsoever while switching apps and i haven't faced any kind of stutters or lags either if you are looking for benchmarks here are the android 20 gigabyte score with a cpu stress test of this rom also, if you are wondering, safety net passes right out of the box over here. You shouldn't worry about banking apps not working or something. Banking apps just works flawlessly over here. The DRM info shows as L1, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p here as this ROM is A11 firmware based. So that's what I think about the latest Evolution X 8th February 2022 build. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think about the K20 Pro's Evolution X ROM. And yes, I know I may sound like a fan, but yes, this is one of the most favorite ROMs for me at least on the redmi k20 pro and you guys should know it already if you don't try this rom and you will tell me why this rom is different from other roms and why this feels so much stable so give this video a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is tito from kd index signing off for today please share this video with your friends if you haven't yet i'll catch you guys in the next one bye bye now